So recently I crashed my drone using the Litchi app follow me function and decided to do a video explaining how to investigate a crash. I've got over 40 years in the aviation industry and a bachelor's and master's degree in aviation safety. I'm a trained aircraft accident investigator. So let's walk through a crash investigation. First thing we're gonna do is look at the resources we've got available. So we've got footage from the drone, from the GoPro and from the iPhone screen recording. And we have the telemetry data from the drone itself that we can export into air data and use that to help us in our investigation. All right, so let's start the investigation. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna review the footage. So I've got the Litchi app open, I've got the follow set up. And I am going to get the drone up in the air. I'm going to set the aircraft position for the follow based on the current aircraft position, which gives me about 70 feet distance and 40 feet altitude. You notice in the lower left-hand corner that my accuracy is at 16 feet, which is good enough for normal things, obviously not good enough for this. So when I take off, start the follow, the drone is going to focus in on me, frame me up, and then when I start moving, it should position itself at 40 feet of altitude and 70 feet away from me. start moving down the road you can see the drone positions itself further than the 70 feet and there's the first link in our accident chain i recognized the drone was moving further right than i expected and i didn't stop and reprogram and try again if i'd done so i could have avoided this Next, I want to import the flight into Google Earth. Once I did that, I figured out that the aircraft had moved, instead of 70 feet laterally, had moved 110 feet laterally. Importing this into Google Earth will allow me to see the flight path, including the altitude, and see if we can figure out what caused this. Now, to get the flight into Google Earth, the first thing you're going to need to do is import the flight into air data. This video here explains the process of getting the flight into air data from Maven. It's very similar in Litchi. Once I've exported the flight to air data, gone into air data, found the flight, I'm going to press export to KML. That's going to create the Google Earth file that will allow us to see the flight visually in Google Earth. After I've exported the KML, navigating to that file and double clicking will open Google Earth and zoom in on the flight area. Now, one of the things that I like to do is once I've got the flight there, I'm going to change the properties of that line, make it a lot thicker. I'm going to bump that up to 10, and I'm going to change the color of that line to yellow. The reason for this, when you export this in Google Earth Studio, that line tends to be a lot smaller because you're exporting in 4K. So I'm going to export that, save that uh, KML file. It will save as a KMZ file. Give it a name. And now we're going to go into Google Earth Studio and create a new project. This video here will show you how to create a project and export it in Google Earth Studio. So I've set this to a 4K, and I'm going to do a 4K 60 frames per second in case I decide I want to slow this down. The next thing I'm going to do is click on Overlays and import KML. We'll import that file that we just created. 
and then double clicking on that will zoom in to your flight location. Now I'm going to go ahead and just do some processing to get that where I can see the see the flight. Once I've got it the way I want it, I'm going to go ahead and preview one more time. And then we're going to render that out. And I think we found the next link in our accident chain. The drone clearly moved further to the right than the 70 feet I programmed it to be. If the software had stuck to the 70 feet i would have avoided the hill and if the sensors had operated the way they were expected to it would have stopped it from slamming into the hill another investigation tool that we have at our disposal is air data gives you the ability to review the flight and look at all of the sensors and what they were seeing at the time find your flight go to the notifications tab on the notifications tab, you see your flight layout, but you can replay that flight in either whatever speed you want. So I'm gonna go in and set that flight to replay at half speed so I can look at the sensors. As I play through, I'm looking at the flight time down to the 10th of a second, the flight mode, the GPS satellites, altitude from the sensors and from the barometer, speed, distance from home, battery information, deviation between the battery cells, and my radio signal. So you can see here at this point the drone has moved its furthest distance. At this point, a minute and 41 seconds into the flight, I start to rapidly lose radio signal. And you'll notice the purple dot there. I reach the maximum speed. And there's another link in our accident chain. If I hadn't exceeded the maximum speed the app could handle, I probably wouldn't have crashed into the hill there. And now, while not technically part of the investigation, I want to show you how I use the DJI Fly app to find my drone. Because the drone hadn't powered down, I could see the drone's position. And by bringing up the map view and by walking towards the drone indicator on the map, I was eventually able to find the drone. Thankfully, the drone wasn't damaged. It was a little dirty but it was pretty close to the ground when it hit and was actually not moving very quickly when it hit. So what did we learn? Pilot error was definitely a contributing factor in this crash. If I had stopped as soon as I noticed the drone drifting off to the right, that would have prevented the accident. If I had positioned the drone to be on my left instead of on my right, it would have kept it completely away from the hill. Another link in this accident chain was the app. I had set the drone to be 70 feet from me laterally. I had a 16 foot accuracy and the drone moved 110 feet from me laterally, which is outside those parameters. Initially, I thought I wasn't going to use the Litchi follow feature again, but I may end up using it. I will just use it in a lot different manner than I did. Part of the problem was with the app, but a lot of the problem was with my execution of the app. So today we've covered how to investigate your crash. We've covered the air data features that allow you to pull that into Google Earth and see your flight. I hope you've learned something from my mistakes. Remember to learn from the mistakes of others because you'll never live long enough to make them all yourself.
thank you for watching and if you've made it this far thank you for your time if you feel like i've earned it i'd appreciate a subscription if you're already subscribed and even if you're not subscribed a thumbs up would help hopefully next time we'll be able to cover some more pleasant topics but much like apollo 13 i'd like to think of this as a successful failure thank you very much and we'll see you next time